Well, here we are back after another unintended break brought about by some unusual weather. We had another super wet system come through uh, during a usually dry time of the year when all of us hay farmers are, are getting ready to do our... Uh, our second cut and uh, it blew out the rivers pretty good um, it spiked back up to just about the same level uh, it rose to after that that storm we had that was influenced by the California stuff the tropical storm or hurricane or whatever it was at the end of the day um, really blew out my uh, my downstream fork where I have been going up high for uh, for those bull trout and we're just getting back into the to the good looking water uh, here on the main river um, I don't expect it to be super hot dry fly action, but I have a nymphin rig strapped to my back should I decide to do that. But to be honest with you, just casting a dry fly <laughs> is what my urge was for today. So even if, um, I think there's some smolt in the river too. I've, that's the second time I've seen my my fly get taken down by a very small snout. Um, but yeah, just casting the dry fly was the uh, the antidote, and it started last night with a uh, pretty inspired tying session where I. I made my first, uh, got my my materials organized for my first shots at my October caddis uh, pattern, which will be kind of my main thing here in another couple of weeks. But while I was at the vise, I tied, whoops, tied a couple of my favorites. But the river definitely looks fishable. And uh, we'll see if there's any dry fly. So anyway, in the middle of that wet system, we had just enough dry days that I was able to get, my neighbor and I were able to get our fields uh, swathed and then the hay dried out and we were able to bale. We both pretty quickly got our hay to the barn or under cover and uh, I ended up netting about four tons which was a little over 100 bales and uh, that hay is already sold to uh, a place in town that has horses. So, it's back to fishing time. And if last September is any indication, uh, and October, there is still some very good dry fly action ahead, particularly if it warms up a little bit. We have been unseasonably cold um, I almost said this fall, technically it's still summer, but after that brutally long cold winter we had, and then kind of a, uh, kind of an instant spring, summer, uh, has been incredibly short, if, if that's it. Um, we had... 
just one extended hot streak that lasted about three weeks or a month where it got high high 80s to mid 90s every day and uh, I thought we were kind of settling in to that for a little while but boy then August ended September started and it was like fall overnight um, I looked at the forecast this morning and there is not a single day in the 10 day forecast that the weather is going to or the temperature is going to get above 80 which that's unusual but uh, hey I'm fishing and at the moment there's not a lot of wind uh, I took the temperature of the water when I got here it's 58 so obviously we're dropping back down but um, still feels good on my uh oh still feels good on my feet up to my knees I did not pull out the waders yet but driving up here I was thinking that's imminent too so just feels good to do some quiet casting although I'm not sure I like how that fly landed <laughs> I was just about to say I don't like how that fly landed and I was gonna pick up right at that instant I love it feels like a pretty good fish again if the flies on the water any anything can happen but if it flies in the air yeah, he's not big but he's got some spunk Mixed Sweet. Hey, easy boy, give me one second and the fly will be out, I swear. Alright, we're on the board. It's funny, while I was drying and dressing my fly, I was looking at those clouds over there. And I was thinking they remind me of, those ones over there remind me of Andy's room in Toy Story. <laughs> and uh, they're called, oh, that was a good rise. They're called uh, Fairweather Cumulus Clouds, and we haven't seen many of those until the last couple of days. All right, I think we're going to get one up here. I did not cast right back to that same spot.
But I got to see when that fish came up and splashed on the fly was that he had a pretty big tail. So from this point, I'm just gonna, oh, okay. That's why I think there's some smolts in the river. Cause that is another time where I saw some action again. Oh brother. I wonder if they would be Chinook smolt from uh, from the hatchery way upstream if they did a smolt release. It's going to be pretty hard to get a dry fly past them to the cutthroat. So at the moment, it appears that one of the fair weather cumulus clouds, I will see that, that fly got sunk by something very small. Oh, and I just fell on. <laughs> Crap. Again, well, maybe we'll hook one and be able to confirm it, but they are just a little bit of a nuisance. Let's get one out there. Now that we can see. Way out there. Yep, they're just coming up and and sinking it. Oh, that was a cutthroat for, oh, you know what? That jump tells me this is probably a little rainbow or steelhead smolt. The way that fish took a leap instantly oh man it came unhooked i was going to be able to confirm what is doing that so i had a funny comment from one of my many many subscribers on this youtube channel that i wanted to address he said yeah your fishing videos are different seems like you spend a lot more time casting and talking <laughs> than I'm used to seeing in, in fishing videos and uh, I said yeah so what's the problem and he was like well um, I mean you do catch fish but you know a lot of fishing videos it's like they they edit them so that the uh, only thing the viewer sees is catching a fish and I so my response was that um, my videos that are simply me taking you fishing with me and the simple fact is that if if I was catching a fish on every cast, I don't think I'd be doing this. Um, and the thing is, that that is just also a reality that no matter who you are, how good at it you are, what what uh, what your history is. Um, we don't catch fish on every cast. It's the challenge. All right, we get to confirm what's going on here, I think. This fish is jumping. He is most likely not a cutthroat. So let's take a look at what we got here. I'll be darned. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We're going back. What I want to see is whether we've got a clipped fin. We don't have a clipped fin. 
we've got the coloration of a coloration of a rainbow size of a steelhead smolt um, so I'm going to go with the idea that there is a tribal hatchery on one of the forks way upstream that does not clip their fish so if they released smolts into the river without clipping them like the state does they would be bunched up like this in schools as they are making their way downstream to go to the ocean so that's my analysis but anyway to finish that point the uh my whole idea in making these videos is just to uh, take you fishing with me and um, so that involves a lot of a lot of casting for my particular personality a lot of uh, talking yakking yapping whatever you want to call it and uh, hopefully bring some relaxation on the other end because that's why I'm here and the relaxation factor um, there's nowhere in this world where I forget about everything else going on in this crazy ass upside down world and in my own little universe nothing makes me forget about the real world more than being knee deep in a 58 degree stream trying to get these trout to uh, come up and take a dry fly so if if you thought this was a trophy hunter type of a production I'm sorry to say you are in the wrong spot Well, this sure took a lot more like a cutthroat than, than that smolt did, but I'm getting the feeling that he might be foul hooked the way he's coming in. Looks to be a little too big to be one of these smolt, but no, and he's not even foul hooked. What's, oh my gosh, it's a bull trout on a dry fly. Wow, you don't see that every day. All right, let's get a good look at this little guy. That's so funny because I brought my my streamer gear in case I wanted to go check out the uh, the fork that I'm always talking about. Probably a fair amount, but the way he is hooked. There we go. All right, let's get a look at this bull trout that took a dry fly. Isn't that sweet? Love these guys. Love bull trout. I just knew there was a decent cutthroat at the at the top of this run, and uh, the only question was whether I was going to get him to come up for a dry, and I did. And he was right in this uh, little spill right here. Patiently awaiting his next meal. Oh, perfect release. He was another football. Love it. 